A warning even with a small party of three, combat in Pokemon can get a little sluggish. And it's a huge pain in the ass to DM the game I ran barely got past the MT Moon boss fight with a Rotom animating a backloader before I gave up trying to manage the campaign. Alright children let me tell you the tale of Vincent, the vending machine. This was in a godlike campaign. And if anyone knows that system you know you're in for some shit. After I ended our last godlike game by erasing the villain from causality by stabbing him in the face and destroying Spain, the DM wrote up a post-apocalyptic game in a setting ruled by Roberts, telling us we had to build mechanical characters. She then informed us that the campaign would be literally Megaman, and so our party was formed of the brave little toaster. Flipsy the wind up dog that does backflips and his wifi, Mr. Zirkin wielding a death ray, and my creation, Vincent the vending machine, opposing us. On the boss selection screen I had the privilege to draw, were Kindling Man, Dance Woman, Wall Man, Mind Bullets Man, Phase Woman, Clockwork Man, Boat Man, and Metal Werewolf Man. Vincent himself had an arbitrarily high body stat, in exchange for being laughable in every other stat up to and including a zero perception, making him blind and deaf, but granting him immense physical strength and a 3 digit HP total at level 1. Also maximum ranks in the sumo wrestling skill, his talent was vend, and here's how it worked I would declare what I wanted, and rolled a vend check. How well I did on the check was how useful the resulting item was for what I wanted it for. Critical failures were a hell of a drug. At one point I attempted to vent something to live through falling into this pit of magma. The resulting crit fail caused me to vent a box of puppies. To make it that much sadder when I hit the magma, we discussed which of our foes we would attack first and it was decided that we would assault the lumber mill stronghold of Kindling Man, who had the power to be really flammable. Throughout our battles with Kindling Man's forces I consistently kept vending gratuitous amounts of paper snakes want to vend a distraction hundreds of paper snakes burst forth from your vending slot, want to vend something to attack the enemy hilariously low roll, hundreds of harmless paper snakes, and so eventually resorted to just violently hurling my own bulk at foes. Conveniently, I appeared to be impervious to the myriad but saw traps in the stage and simply walked in front of the party while Flipsy guided me. Eventually we reached the boss door, and upon entering we were greeted by the mighty kindling man, who began monologuing. I attempt to shut him up, roll low, and hundreds more paper snakes burst from my slot. The rest of the party engages our foe in battle, and I try one last vend roll to destroy him before rolling up my rebolevs and joining the fray the old fashioned way. Critical success. I vend a small black boss with a red button on it, lacking limbs to press it with. I tip myself over and land on the button. The thousands of paper snakes filling the entire stage including the boss room burst into flame simultaneously. It was a light paper snakes on fire button. Kindling man erupts into flame and begins screaming. While over the walls of the boss room we can see that the entire lumber mill we were in was not responding well to the large influx of fire. After waiting several rounds for Kindling Man to die eventually tackled him because he just kept running around, screaming, we acquired his power and voted on who to give it to, for heroically burning down the entire stage. Twas decided that Vincent should receive it. See how it worked was that upon defeating a robot master, one of us got a new pseudotolent with limited ammo that recharged every stage, and so I got a 3 shot ability to make targets for more flammable than normal. Thus began my ascension. Our recurring work was a powerful, advanced combat robot far more so than us we were all highly outdated, unearthed in a dig site by the local robot spider villagers hoping us to be the chosen ones to overthrow the evil Dr. Warbington, and had on average about 90 HP, a defensive forcey field, and were capable of dealing 60 damage on a lucky shot of their dual plasma cannons. Flipsy had 10 HP, Mr. Zirkin had 70, and I had 720. Mr. Zirkin and I worked out a fabulous Anetwa punch to defeat them in which he would knock out their shield with a single shot and I would ram them like a god main freight train. And Flipsy used her advanced Wi-Fi network to upload maps of the area and camera footage to me so I could stumble around with something resembling direction. Anyway, let's see, who did we fight next? That's right, Boatman who had the power to command a legion of the undead. Also he was a 400 meter long airship. Anyway, using a large trampoline I had vended, 
and a small hotel balloon built by the robot spider villagers. We boarded Boatman and got on his deck, where we did battle with a tremendous horde of a 100 skeletons. As the battle raged Flipsy hacked into Boatman's security systems and downloaded a map, uploading it to the party. We promptly discovered the location of the reactor room, and that Boatman was powered by a large, large nuclear reactor. I wordlessly charged to the nearest door below deck, and as they interpreted my goals the party exchanged worried looks and Mr. Zirkin broke the silence with a quiet I think we should go. As the party searched desperately for lifeboats while battling skeletons, I charged through the flimsy constructs of bone and found Boatman's reactor. Using my limitless knowledge of science and the connection to the ship's cameras Flipsy gave me so I could see. I used the three shots of Kindling Man's power to make things outrageously flammable. I used these shots on a nearby bucket and mop of clear liquid which I later learned to be fleeing fluid, the reactor's primary control rod, and the nuclear reaction itself. I then turned to the DM and said I vent fire. I vended a Zippo lighter, which, failing to activate with my small stumpy vending machine legs, I simply tipped over and crushed in an attempt to create a spark. As the party flew away on their stolen lifeboat, they turned and witnessed Boatman briefly become a small star. As the nuclear reaction caught fire, the control rod overheated and caught fire, and the explosion knocked the bucker over, sending flaming mop fluid all throughout the reactor room into all the wiring and such. What happened next was a moment of absolute beauty. The resulting supernova failed to actually kill Boatman, though it did completely annihilate his engines and he began plummeting to the ground. Simultaneously, I used my last remaining fate points I can't remember the godlike system's name for them to boost my body and HP as high as I possibly could, in an attempt to survive point blank nuclear annihilation. The DM then rolls a few dice to see where the screaming ball of nuclear fire that was Boatman lands, and promptly buries her face in her hands and informs us that it plummets to earth and lands on Mind Bullets Man's stage obliterating it in an atomic holocaust. She then asks Emmy to roll luck to see where I land, as I had successfully lived through the 3000 damage I took with 5 horsepower remaining. I then rolled a critical success, having lived through the destruction of his fortress. Mind Bullets Man steps outside his boss chamber to examine the commotion, and is promptly crushed to death by an irradiated vending machine moving at terminal velocity. The ability to summon the dead was claimed by Mr. Zirkin, while the Mind Bullets were claimed by the brave little toaster, and we sallied forth. I used my hoarded EXP to buy a third die on all further vend attempts and, horrified, we speculate on what would happen if I rolled three tens. As 210s was near Deus Ex Machina levels of Get Fucked Phase Woman, our next target proved to have a stage consisting of you know that hallway in Heatman's stage with the lava floor and the only safety is disappearing blocks, 8 of that hallway. Course this was after the guardian of her stage, a gigantic nuclear powered bee that shot missiles, and I had to spend a shot of my kindling power to kill. Anyway, this was the dungeon that involved an ear TPK as we fell into the lava, because disappearing blocks are assholes. Flipsy saved us by hacking into the main control network of the blocks and taking them for herself, allowing us to materialize them wherever we felt like. Of course we came to the obvious conclusion, and used them to create a giant, teleporting cube immature, with Vincent forming the head, and Zirkin and the toaster as the respective hands. Apparently FaZe woman decided fuck that and so her boss chamber was an elevator to the surface, where she was waiting in a humongous matcher to do battle with us. I use my two remaining kindling shots during the resulting matcher fight, one on FaZe woman herself, and one on her robot's codpiece, the brave little toaster and then an act out finishing move. He used his bravery talent to its fulliest, and rolled a might roll of his toasting skill. My cube amateur's body no wielding a glorious, redot hand of justice. I told the toaster to grit his teeth, and punched the enemy robot in the nuts as hard as I could. Redot toasting science impacted the bekindled crotch and the mecha's entire pelvis erupted into fire. I spent a newly acquired fate point to continue this maneuver, and used my giant cube body to grapple the mecha, hoisting it above my head with my glorious cheating strength thanks Flipsy. Thanks disappearing block mecha, and hold in it such a way that with a final act of defiance, I am able to suplex phase woman's robotic guardian onto phase woman herself. Crotch first. 
The burning crotch ignites the kindling set on Faye's woman herself, and she is simultaneously crushed and burned to death, while the strength of my suplex sends her mecha through the ground, destroying the elevator shaft her down to the magma caverns and destroying what little structure remained down there, and that's how the brave little toaster got the power to phase through walls and I burned down the first 4 stages of the campaign. Don't worry, that trend continues. Our next target wallman. His stage was the factory responsible for all the arsehole robot minions we had to fight. Highlights included vending crude oil all over the assembly line, flipsy hacking an attack helicopter and playing ride of the Valkyries over the factory speakers, and the brave little toaster successfully diplomacying HAL 9000. And then Wallman himself arrived, by which I mean we arrived, because he was, well, a wall. I don't even know what half of these reaction images mean anymore. Wallman was the far wall of the factory's main warehouse, and covered with guns. Given that we had destroyed basically the entire factory by this point out of spite, we just kind of tipped him over and left. Flipsy scored us a hijacked airship and we stole the factory secret prototype, some kinda robot that shot lemons I don't remember. However, tippered over was right where Wallman wanted to be, and now his guns were pointed up at us. Furthermore, he revealed his secret technique, he had rockets on the other side, and used them to produce lift, flying towards us. Unprepared for an enemy with such bulk and firepower and invincibility his power was kind of being immune to damage, all seemed lost. But fret not said the toaster, for he had concocted a plan to utilize all of the party's strengths, by which I mean mine and Flips's because Zerkin spent most sessions wondering what the actual fuck was going on. Flipsy used the lemon but as a sacrificial lamb having it dive in the way of one of Wallman's missiles, and ejecting Vincent and the toaster from the helicopter the toaster hold me to brace myself. And so, did I vend. And so, did I fend with the expressed desire to break shit. And so, four sessions after acquiring my third vending die, did I roll my three tens. What came out of Vincent's vending slot was a lunch Libra mask, one that somehow attached itself to his frame midfall. The DM put on heavy metal mariachi music, and told me that I could feel power coursing through me, and a cape billowed forth from the base of the mask. Our fall reached its climax, and a split second before we reached our foe. The toaster activated Faze Woman's power, and phased Vincent inside Wall Man's body, and lo, did I break shit using the mask's phenomenal wrestling power. I wrestled Wall Man from the inside out, as his invulnerability only applied to his outside. So thoroughly did I wreck his shit that I folded wall man into an enormous, burning paper crane, which, when I was done, I chest bursted out of, angling the explosion of the mask's power as best I could as its final swan song. I attempted to ride the explosion back to the safety of the helicopter, while the crana shaped wall man was propelled in the opposite direction, crashing into one of the post-apocalyptic world's last human settlements and destroying it utterly, airborne. I attempted another vending check to do nothing more than look cool, and I proceeded to roll three nines. The DM announced that I proceeded to vend a cluster of dozens of landmines, armed, mid-air, as they fell from my slot. I then vending seven tigers, each of whom leapt to a nearby landmine, detonating it mid-air and leaping from the explosion to the next airborne landmine. As I was framed by seven tigers using airborne landmines and stepping stones in the sky, the explosions increased my speed and carried me to the waiting helicopter on literal wings of flame. As my billowing cape burned away, satisfied at our efforts, and Vincent requesting Wallman's invulnerability power for himself, we took a break back at the spider village to rest, which was attacked by Dance Woman the Fiend. Much property damage and some vended dubstep later, only two robot masters and stages for me to maliciously destroy remained. Our chosen foe was Clockwork Man. We were informed that his stage was a tremendous clock tower, that was required to recharge his antiquated technology apparently he could just pay somebody to wind him up. Nope. Had to be this tower. Now, I've played Castlevania. More to the point, the DMs played Castlevania. You could not pay me to climb this fucking clock tower. So, first, I vended a trampoline to attempt to propel myself to the top floor. This failed. So I threw a brick through the window, out of petty spite, at our conundrum. Mr. Zirkin had the first good idea he'd had all campaign, and suggested we simply cover the base of the tower with C4. 
And so we did. I stepped inside long enough to fire all three shots of Kindling Man's power up into the bowels of the clock tower, and then ran as the others coated the tower's foundation in heavy explosives. One detonation and one ruined stage later, we collectively high-fived at another trivialized robot master. Then Clockwork Man walked up behind us. He had, in his hands, a paper bag full of groceries, and a Starbucks cup. Clockwork Man was 15 minutes late to his own boss fight with Starbucks, and there he stood, dumbstruck at what we had done to his home. So we left. Fuck, he can't hurt us anymore. He'll wind down eventually and won't have a way to turn the key fuck that guy. And so we left to Metal Werewolf Man's stage, which was a tremendous stone coliseum. Devoid of enemies. The boss door was 10 feet from the stage entrance, and so we entered, greeted with an empty arena. And by empty I mean lined with Tesla cannons pointed inwardly, with an elevator shaft in the middle. From this elevator rose a 10 foot tall loop and four made entirely out of blades and what I can only assume was hatred for all that lived. What ensued was a far more climactic battle than we had expected, largely because this was the first robot master that could take a goddamn punch. Built to be a physical bruiser, we ended up on the ropes, as even Vincent's tremendous HP pool was nothing to the claws of a robot that was also a werewolf with knives for fur, and then the brave little toaster used phase woman's power on metal werewolf man as he lunged at me, and he phased into my vending compartment, which we had assumed to be some sort of nth dimensional space that held anything and everything, and was infinite in scale, so uh, good work team. Nice hustle what's that DM fuck no we're not letting him out, we don't care if we didn't get his fucking power, he's a goddamned robot werewolf, flipsy, satisfied like the fact that all of us were alive and largely intact, went over to the aforementioned tesla cannons and hacked into those two, she then overloaded them, and changed their firing angle, the resulting blast of lighting was so powerful that it incinerated metal werewolf man's arena, and she had actually aimed it a few miles south at where clockwork man was standing. We kind of heard a little ding and she suddenly got clock powers. Yeah bye. And so that's how all 8 robot masters and all 8 of their goddamned stages fell by our hands. We started to attack Dr. Warbington's femur fortress. But, up, 10 minutes into that dungeon we armed Vincent with a cannon that shot nuclear reactors and we all kind of agreed there really wasn't anything he could have that would stand in our way and that campaign ended. And then we all played Super Smash Brothers. The end. I fucking love stories like these. Like, seriously, they're just so fucking out there and completely different. And, you know, I, I like to think that they, these stories, like, give people ideas for, like, oh, I could do this for a campaign or I could do that, you know. And that's why I really enjoy about them, you know. Uh, they're just so different and it makes people think, like, well, here, I could maybe, like, you know, think outside the box and maybe not just a traditional, you know, fucking basic fantasy setting, you know. This, I love shit like this and I love things that are just that wee bit off and different, you know, but I will say, uh, Vincent to me, he works a lot more Pandora's box than a fucking vending machine, but it's an interesting concept for a player character, I must say, though there was so many great parts in this uh, story, I loved Croc- Crockwork Man showing up late to his own boss fight, and whenever they were dealing with the boat and shit, and it was going up in the air, like, you know, uh, it was just so much, honestly, I, I really enjoyed it, I know it wasn't the longest, but like, you know, I, I thought it definitely fulfilled all the parts like you know all the key parts that i got it take it takes the box for me does that make any sense yeah i like that it takes the box you know so uh like uh, if you enjoyed it definitely let us know what you thought down below like you know was any of your parts that you thought oh yeah that's fucking great give us that you know i really enjoyed it so like as always before you go make sure to click that wee notification bell stay up to speed with any and all further videos and i hope to see your comments down below if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?